Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Urban Update. I'm Byron Barnett. On the show this morning, leading minds from around the world coming to Harvard to discuss the benefits of negotiation and leadership. Also, a youth symposium offering an opportunity for young people to contribute to an ongoing dialogue. We'll also have the voice of more than 4,000 MBTA union transit professionals, the Boston Carmen's Union, they stop by. And later on, on the program, a unique look at opening day at Fenway Park. But up first, Sunday, May 1st, marks the 48th annual Walk for Hunger. And once again, WHDH Channel 7 will be a proud sponsor of this, the largest annual one-day fundraiser to alleviate local hunger and the oldest continual pledge walk in the country. This annual tradition always takes place on the first Sunday of each May. And here to tell us more about this year's walk is Project Bread Executive Director Ellen Parker. Ellen, welcome back, and uh, let's Happy do it again. Let's s- do it. All set for another another big walk, 48th mm-hmm. annual uh, 48th annual walk. Mm-hmm. Kept it going that long. That is just amazing, uh, amazing for another year for the Walk for Hunger. How, what have you got in store for this year? Well, this year we have a couple of new things. We have a new route. We have a 10-mile route because of construction in Watertown. And we have a 5K road race. So it's going to happen all, all at once. And, um, and then people start and leave at the common. Um, so it's, it's a little bit, the route's a little bit different. Um, we're going to have a little more entertainment, a little more activity on the common. But it's, you know, it's still really for the same core purpose. It's, a, it's really kind of a community foundation that's replenished every year. And what we do is we help people who struggle to make ends meet. Now, for uh, many of our viewers may not understand how important the Walk for Hunger is in just the local communities. Can you sort of uh, explain how this works alleviating hunger in Massachusetts? Sure. Uh, Project Bread's really unique in that we really take a focus on um, what what people need. So we have um, we fund programs that are efficient, which means that it's easy to get to, it's easy to access. We fund programs that are non-stigmatizing, which means that people don't have to feel ashamed when they get help. And we fund programs that are consistent. So if you go on Tuesday, you can expect it to be there on the following Tuesday. Now, uh, the walk for the work of Project Bread is a year-long mission. Mm-hmm. Um, what um, I guess what happens after the walk? Well, we we do a lot of things after we work all year long in the in the school system. We work all over the state to improve school food. That's an example of a program that is universal. Everybody can use it. It really is a boost to the family budget, but nobody feels badly about it. We run a a, a hotline, a twenty um, uh, every day of the year hotline um, across the state, food source hotline. Mm-hmm. We um, do food stamp outreach. We work in health centers. So we're not much for building things, but what we do is we go into communities and we build communities so we don't have big buildings or things like that. Now, uh, how can people get uh, in- involved in the walk on May 1st? I know there are several different ways you can get involved. I think the best way is, well, of course, you can go to the WHDH um, website and click on it from there. Um, you can go to Project Bread, um, www.projectbread.org and go, go on in that way. I think registering online and finding it out online is, in the old days used to call, but I think that's really the most efficient, but you can also call us. Now, a lot of people um, may not realize like, how much hunger there is uh, in, in, in the state of Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. This is a uh, you know, relatively you know, you know, affluent state, I guess, but uh, there is a lot of hunger here. Well, I think that it's really easy to understand when you start to think about what it's like to be a worker who's making $12 an hour or $14 an hour. I mean, we we have people who call us all the time who have a couple of jobs, but at the end of the month, they can't make ends meet. So, you know, at its root, it's an economic problem, um, but beyond that, it's also an urgent problem. So we try to do both things. Um, we, We support um, $15 minimum wage. At the same time, we reach out to people who um, who are really desperately in need of help, and they're mostly working families. Sad to say. Okay. Well, May 1st, we're going to try to do a little something about that. Get out your walking shoes, everybody. Uh, we at Channel 7 will be looking forward to being there with you on Sunday, May 1st, early in the morning. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I think it's going to be really fun. I think it's going to be a really, really special walk. Okay. It, I'm sure it will be. And just keep your fingers crossed for good weather. Okay, Ellen Parker, thank you for coming in. And, uh, you know, good luck with everything on, on May 1st. 
Coming up, the union that represents over 4,000 MBTA workers right here on the Connect.